I made it abundantly clear through daily reports of the ramifications of our messaging. Abundantly clear. I showed every day what was happening, what the reaction was, and I also was monitoring Arab social media and sharing uh, with Washington the images that were going viral across Arab social media. And these, uh, I, thank you as well, Amy, for amplifying the voices of, of the Palestinian families at the top of the hour. Those are things that sometimes Washington does not hear. Um, but it is what the Arab public is consuming on a daily basis. And these pictures of dead children, of maimed, uh, of maimed toddlers, they're, they're traumatizing. And my point back was, look at these images that people in this part of the world are consuming on a daily basis. There is an absolute disconnect with what people in the Arab world are seeing happening in Gaza and our talking points. There's an utter disconnect. The anger in the region is palpable, and it is, it is traumatic. When people are consuming daily images of massacres, of people suffering, and yet they hear that the United States is willfully enabling it by continuing to send bombs, it, it, it makes people lose complete faith in the United States. And this is what was so painful to me as an American diplomat. I've worked for the last 18 years to strengthen ties between the United States and other countries, to advance U.S. interests, to promote America's image. But this policy made it impossible. How can we talk about press freedom when we remain willfully silent about the killings of so many journalists? I mean, I personally worked to try to get a statement out on the killing of journalists in Gaza, and it, I was met with so much pushback. And I was so shocked at my own colleagues that would push back on that. It is a fundamental American value to be promoting freedom of press. We cannot have exceptions. We cannot have double standards. As American diplomats, we need to apply our values, our standards on the situation. 